Hi students, so uh, previously we talked a little bit about uh, more technical aspects of C-sharp events, uh, delegates, uh, operators, things like that. Uh, this, this lecture I'd like to talk about inheritance, which is the second object-oriented programming concept that we're going to learn. Uh, the first one being encapsulation. If you remember, we, we try to make objects ourselves, and in our case we made a product. Um, but we wanted it to mimic kind of how we did text boxes and, and labels and things like that to where we can have properties on our objects. Uh, we can have instances of our objects that we can we can make multiple of and put them in lists and be able to manipulate them that way. So now what we're going to be looking at is inheritance which builds off of that encapsulation but it, it takes it a step further and it says not only can we uh, make a public like a public interface into our class and be able to manipulate fields and properties and methods we can and be able to um, be able to manage what the user of our class can see now what we want to do is be able to extend functionality from our from our custom class that we made we want to extend that functionality into other classes that have like or, or similar aspects or properties to them. So uh, this lecture I'm just going to step through this PowerPoint a little bit and explain exactly what I mean by inheritance. So here is how inheritance works and I also want to show or talk a little bit of, uh, through some of the jargon I'm going to use when I talk about inheritance. So we can see that they have this uh, over here called base class here and from that base class is going to be all of our common functionality or like functionality between um, between our classes and then you're going to have derived classes and those derived classes are going to take from the base class everything that's common and then you're also going to extend it to include other things so We've done this with forms, and as you can see, we have this system windows form that has some very basic features like the ability to show, the ability to close, the ability to show a dialog, uh, the text of that form, and then we extend it and make our own form. So we're saying not only do I want this stuff from this form, I want to extend this form to include all of my text boxes, buttons, and methods. So here is the inheritance hierarchy for form control classes. So as you can see on the left hand side here, everything inherits from the big O object in C Sharp, which is no different than Java. And then from the big O object, you get uh, control, which is another base class. And then from control, you get the different um, bases for the different components on your UI. So you have a button base, a group box base, a label, a text box base and then as you can see those inherit from things even below them so a button base inherits from button checkbox radio button so chances are in, in button base or even in control you have the ability to have a name and a text field for what you want this thing to say but then even into the more uh, the more unique functionality as you go down the the inheritance hierarchy here maybe a checkbox is the like a button, but maybe when you click this, um, it checks, it just checks it, or maybe when you click this, just a radio button is checked and instead of this, this, where actual functionality is going to happen. So as you can see from here, it gets more generic, like object just has equals, two strings, a hash function, and then it gets more specific as you go down the inheritance hierarchy into what these things uh, are, are going to do. So just like I said before, here are the methods of the system.object class. So this is the class that all other objects in C Sharp inherit from. So you can see here the two strings. So every single object in C Sharp you can call two string on. If you want to have the string representation of that object, they all have different uh, things. They all have different things they do when you call the two string method. They all have the equals method, so you can see if this object is equal to another object. There's the get hash code function. 
There's the reference equals method, so that actually compares the references of the object and not the object itself. And now from the form aspect of it, here is the aspect of the product that we were doing. So as you can see at the top of this page is the code and description and price of the product that we had. And then you see here that book and software are going to be classes that we are going to use that's going to use the functionality of our product and then it's going to use that functionality and add functionality for a book to have an author and for software to have a version. And then here's a, a generic list of products and then here's the product list. So you remember from our product, our generic list of product, or our product list, that we had everything that a list could provide, the remove, the add, they'd be able to have an index, and then we extended that to add, to fill, to save. So that's um, a little bit of inheritance as well, or the ability to wrap a class with your own sort of class. This slide just shows the code for a simplified version of the product base class. So everything, say, a, in Amazon is a product. But then maybe from there, there's different types of products. So we already talked about there's uh, software, there's books. And those, those different types of products are going to be a bit more uh, specific rather than generic. So as you can see this is very generic, something that every single product is going to have. You're going to want to be able to get the display text. You're going to want to be able to get the code, the description, the price. But then maybe when you want to get um, a, a software you want to know the version. Here are some access modifiers. Uh, we've went through those before. So here's the syntax for creating subclasses, and if we go back to the, a form that we create, we can see that we always have this public class and we have our form name, and that form ends up extending uh, if we were in Java, but here we use a colon in C-sharp, and we ended up extending the base class name. So if we ended up using our, our book and software analogy, we would have that software colon product, so it would extend product. So this next slide shows that where we have our book class that extends product. And then it also shows the constructor for this book class that takes in everything that a product takes in as well as the author. Lastly we have the override which for our get display text and what's all override is saying that I don't want to use the method that's in product I want to use the get display text method here. So that's all that that's saying, the override annotation here. Here's another way to override a method. And here's some code that uses the overridden method. So here we're making a new book or a new thing of software. And then from there we're saying message box show p which is our product. As you can see, our product is equal to book, and we're using the display text for that book. It calls the book get display text. And then if we say the product equals software, then we're calling the software get display text. So that's the difference there. So as you can see, because book and software both inherit from product, we can set that product equal to that book or that piece of software because they have an is a relationship there because a book is a product and a software is a product. They have that is a relationship. So here's our product maintenance application that uh, we'll show in my next lecture. And then here's two versions of the new product form. So we're going to go ahead and start diving into Visual Studio uh, next.